Welcome everybody to the Sapper Woodworking Channel. Uh, I wanted to do a quick introductory to this video and over the years I've made quite a few uh, wooden spheres or, or balls on the lay. These are all hand turned and uh, this one is out of spalted maple. This one is out of uh, walnut, black locust, and Brazilian cherry. And here's one of just some laminated scraps I made a while back. So I wanted to try something different with making the balls. And I have a nephew who likes to uh, solve the Rubik's Cube puzzle. So I thought I would try to encase a Rubik's Cube inside of clear resin and then turn that on the lathe. And that did create a couple of challenges because I had to be sure when I was creating my, my blank to, to turn that the cube was centered as close as I could get to the center line on the, on the lathe because if it was not encased in the resin as close as possible to the center, it would turn wobbly and it wouldn't be centered inside of the ball at the end. But um, I kind of thought through the steps and the project did end up turning out pretty cool. So this is my final Rubik's Cube encased in resin and I turned a little uh, walnut base out of some scraps. This will be a present for my nephew Josh who loves the Rubik's Cube. I hope you like it and let's get on with the video. We're starting this video with some work already completed. What you're seeing is two blue solo cups with small pieces of sacrificial wood glued to the bottom with maybe an inch and a half of clear resin previously poured and cured on the bottom of the cup. And the reason for this is the main objective I'm trying to accomplish is to having the Rubik's Cube centered inside of the epoxy. And I can't just drop a Rubik's Cube inside of a cup of epoxy because it'll float to the surface during the curing process. So having that previous clear floor on the bottom of the cup, I can just use some CA glue and glue the Rubik's Cube to the clear surface on the bottom. And that will help me uh, with the objective of centering the Rubik's Cube inside of the uh, second resin casting, which I'm performing at this point. So in the process of creating the ball blank, that I'll be eventually turning on the lathe, I decided to go ahead and just, you know, make two separate pours. You know, when you go through all these steps to, you know, mix the epoxy and cure it in the pressure pot and do all the things you gotta do, it's not that much more work to create two blanks. So I, I was a little concerned because I'd be pouring, you know, the resin might be a two and a half inch deep pour and that's a lot of resin to cure, and I was concerned that it might crack during that process. So having kind of a backup in case the first one cracked, I just, you know, just decided to make two. I ended up uh, having a really good pour on both of the uh, both of the blanks, so I can end up making two separate balls uh, once it's all said and done with. And in this particular case, when I was mixing up the epoxy, I ran the the mixing bit on the drill a little on the slow side to minimize the creation of any air bubbles in the resin. I was going to be, you know, carrying this inside the pressure pot and the point of the pressure pot is that it shrinks any residual air bubbles in the resin so you don't see them, but, you know, having fewer to start off with would be fewer that you possibly have a problem with once the resin is cured. So we now have the two cups inside of the pressure pot. We'll fire that up to roughly about 65 PSI and let that cure for maybe 24 to 36 hours inside the pot. And I was really happy how these pours turned out. I had no cracking of the resin. It looked really clear with uh, limited to no air bubbles. The only really issue was with that much epoxy, it'll generate quite a bit of heat during the exothermic chemical reaction when it cures. And I did end up with some discoloration of the stickers on the outside of the cube. It's not too terrible, but you know maybe next time I could try to acquire a, a better level or better quality Rubik's Cube before the pour. But it uh, ended up looking kind of nice and 
once we finish with that, we'll move on to mounting our wooden sacrificial piece on the opposite end. Now the ball turning jig that I'll be using to create the final perfect sphere requires a couple of inches of you know, sacrificial wood to the lathe mounted side of your project. So I've just taken what I think was 40 grit sandpaper and really scratched up that flat layer to, to increase the chances of good adhesion between the resin and uh, the cured resin and the sacrificial piece of wood. So I'm just going through the process of uh, mixing up some resin and I'll glue those two blanks up and let that cure again overnight before I move on to additional steps. Okay, so, so far we have the Rubik's Cube embedded in resin inside of this cup. And we've got some sacrificial pine glued on to the cup. We're going to take our metal chuck, mount it on the lathe, attach the sacrificial wood. And I do have it glued up in this orientation. So no matter how then I get that sacrificial piece. I'll have long grain going that way. That would sh should give me enough support to hold the ball. Had I glued it 90 degrees this way with the annular rings going that direction, I would take a chance on, you know, as this part thins down, which you'll see later in the video of, um, of that shearing off with a little bit of stress. So with the wood glued, uh, glued this way, I should uh, not have that problem. So let's get this thing mounted. And we'll turn it around, expose the resin, and see where we want to go from there. So there's a little bit of a guesswork when I'm gluing on the cup on top of my sacrificial piece to get that as centered as possible. And as I'm spinning up the lay, this cup is not moving all that much back and forth so that means I did a good job in getting this centered on my sacrificial piece. Now I'll add in here that I almost always use traditional uh, turning tools which is you know some form of high-speed steel but uh, in the case when I do work with resin, I'll be, as you can see here, using a carbide tipped lathe chisel. Uh, the carbide just seems to work much better when working with the resin. And I'll, uh, you can't tell in this shot of the video, but I'll end up kind of raising the handle side of the work tool to kind of give myself almost a little bit of a negative raked scraper. And that just seems to work much better when you're uh, when you're turning resin. Okay, so we have progressed. We've removed most of the plastic cup, and now you can see the Rubik's cube embedded in that resin. So I've taken my calipers. I'm taking my calipers, making sure that they're on metric. Okay, so I'm gonna first. Draw a line and what will be the center of the Rubik's Cube. So I'm just eyeballing where the center row of squares are. And I'm going to draw a line with a Sharpie. So that's basically the center line on the Rubik's Cube. Take my caliper. Drop that right on the center line. And I get about 74 millimeters. So half that is 37 millimeters. So we'll move that down to 37. And we've closed. 
close enough. So then we're going to mark 37 on each side of my center line. Grab those around just for reference. Okay. So next step is going to be remove most of this area because this is all sacrificial. There's a little piece of wood that you recall I embedded in the resin earlier. So my center point would have a good place to grab. And then this is all sacrificial here, and in between these two points will be, these two reference lines will be my eventual ball. Now I'm going to use a jig that I recently got from a company called Chefware Kits. It's uh, US domestic made, and I've been experimenting with this, and I'm working on a review video of this product, and this mounts in my banjo, and we'll spin back and forth on top of that ball but the idea before you get to using this jig is to remove as much of this material as you can and get this sphere uh, close to get this as close to a sphere as you can before you move on to this jig so that's what we're going to do next and progress with our ball At this point in the process, I've got my project mounted on the lathe with a standard four-jaw metal chuck to the headstock side, which is on the left, and uh, just a center point on my tailstock, which is on the right. And that's perfectly fine, but eventually I'm going to have to remove the tailstock when I start rounding uh, what you're seeing is the right side of the ball and removing that little piece of sacrificial wood that I had glued at the very bottom of the cup originally. And having uh, the square part on the metal chuck is just really not sufficient. There's just not that much gripping strength if it's trying to hold itself out without any tailstock support. So what I've decided to do is I'm just cutting down the sacrificial wood side of the project measuring with calipers right there and I'll be remounting uh, this project in another metal jaw which I'll have round I'll be mounting it via the round section and that clamping pressure down on an entirety of a of a round piece of wood will create way more grip strength than how it's mounted there which is just kind of on the points of the four jaw chuck so that's just a safety thing uh, I'm just super concerned that if I remove the tailstock my project might go flying off the lathe so I'm just converting it over to a different holding mechanism that'll be um, way superior and as a result way safer.
Okay, so we have progressed. We have a reasonably round ball. And we got the Rubik's Cube embedded in there. Now this particular jig, uh, you know, there's lengthy instructions in the manual, but I found a sort of a shortcut on how to get the jig set up correctly. And what you want to do, because this, because this jig sweeps top side to side, you want a, a reference line that's perfect from the center here over to the center there. Now, normally, what I do is just rotate it around and pick a sharpie and slide it up on my support stop here, my support bar to center that, and that would work here. Actually, I have a sort of a, even a shorter cut because this is, you know, square Rubik's cube that inside that ball so I'm just going to draw a line that follows the corner of the Rubik's Cube and continue that line straight down and the same over on this side and that should give me a pretty good side to side reference that will be close enough to set my jig up which I will do that now if you're interested in getting more information on this jig, uh, go ahead and feel free to hit that subscribe button to my channel because I will be having a review video of this jig I'll post post it eventually. So the, the key to this jig, because it does sweep left to right, is the cutter head. You want it lined up right on the center. So I'm going to loosen it and lower this. My cutter head is right dead center. And if I were to look at this sideways, to clamp everything down, I want this bit to sweep exactly along that line in both directions. You know, so the rounder you make the ball before you start using the jig, the less cutting you do with this jig, but I've kind of left it a little bit oblong and oval in this case for this demonstration. So I know this is right above my center line on the ball. And I'm just gonna sweep it down and it's really close to my hand drawn line centering here. Sweep it over and it's dead on on that side. So it's set up pretty quickly. And the manual, they talk about making a jig to have your banjo square here and some other things. I've just found it quicker to draw the line, lower it so that your cutting edge is right on your crosshair center, raise it up and sweep it back and forth until it clears both ends. So what I'm gonna wanna do is make sure before I start cutting that I clear out a little bit more of this wood over here. And as the bit comes down, it will clear it out. And eventually, I'm not concerned if, you know, once this gets too thin, I'll maybe even, before I start cutting, I'll pop the tail support away and just remove that um, with the bit so actually I think I'll just since I already have the jig set up I'll just continue sweeping down and cutting until this bit gets closer and it'll remove it itself all right so let's get cutting lower that down until I start hitting the corner and we'll just start going back and forth and as we turn this knob the cutting bit will go lower and lower and lower and start cutting off my edges here and eventually we'll have a round ball. So unfortunately, most of the shot, most of this shot doesn't include the jig that I'm using, which I guess would might give you incentive to subscribe to the channel and watch out for the very detailed review video I'll be doing on this jig. But in any case, every time I sweep back and forth, I untighten the jig, turn the, my top adjustment knob about a quarter of a turn, which uh, might be a... 64th of an inch 
uh, decrease in bit height because you're, you're not taking off a whole lot of material on each pass. Uh, you just want to kind of take it slow and steady and uh, eventually you'll get a nice round ball. Well, our time-lapse shot is complete, and we have almost a perfect sphere. Uh, we'll go through the process of sanding and buffing the resin. I believe I started with 120 grit sandpaper, went to 150, 180. Then you'll see me uh, go through 220 all the way on up to maybe 5,000, and then I tried out some uh, some buffing pads to go even higher to see if that made a difference and to be honest with you I still need to do some additional research and I need some additional practice on you know the proper way to buff out resin but it, it came out pretty well in the end um, it's shiny uh, you can see really clearly through the cured resin and it does create kind of a, a magnification effect when you're looking at the ball so you know I'm pretty happy with how it uh, how it buffed out As we near completion of the project, I think I'm pretty happy how this turned out. It was really, you know, I've turned a lot of, uh, a lot of balls on the lathe. This is the first one I've ever turned something encased in, in resin. So there was a bunch of additional steps I had to consider. And, and definitely uh, when you hold the ball up to the light, you can see a little bit of that layer in between uh, the initial little inch and a half pour where I had glued the Rubik's Cube down to it and the rest of the second pour. But it's not all that noticeable, and uh, I'm really just, you know, kind of happy how this turned out in the end. And I'll uh, definitely want to give this a try with casting and other items inside of the sphere. Hope you like the project. If you found some, uh, some help in the video, please consider subscribing. That really helps us with the YouTube. And hit that like button. And if you have any questions, I will definitely get those answered. Uh, have a great day. And again, thanks for watching. Thank you.